Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well today we're going to show you how you can use your code module. Believe it or not, this is just a code module over here. When I click on it, it's going to flip images. And this code module is also controlling the styling and the animation on our little module here. There's all kind of things you can do with the code module. And I'm going to go through a few of them today. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. Once enabled, let's go down where we want to work. I've got a section here with a row with two columns in it. I'm going to delete this row and we'll start from scratch. Okay, I'm going to add a new row. I'm going to add two columns. In our first column here, I'm going to add a code module. Great, so here we are. And the code module will let you add all kinds of different code. You can add HTML, you can add CSS, you can add JavaScript. So let's start with a bit of HTML. I'll create a div inside. I'm going to put a little h3 heading and let's say code module. As you can see, that's come up there. Now we can add inline styles to this in the actual H3, I can just add a space, put the word style, equals, open and close some inverted commas, and we can tell it what we want to do. So I'm going to say text, align, and I want it to be in the middle, so I'll say center, great. We can actually give our code module a height, depth, and a background color. Let's give it a height, let's say 300 pixels, and a background color of perhaps blue so you can see it. There we go. So there's our little module right there. Obviously you probably want that in the middle there. So you could just add a bit of padding top, say 120 picks. And we popped our little writing down there. I'll make it white in color so you can see it a little bit more in the style for the actual H3 itself. Semicolon always between each bit of code you want to put a semicolon so you can add another piece of code I'm just gonna say color white it's FFF in CS3 there it is right there so you can do all kinds you can write all kind of HTML and things like that well let's get rid of this and let's do something else to do our image swap I'm gonna put a bit of HTML in now I've got to actually select the images that I want to put in there so I'll go to my media library. This is the second one I use. So I'm going to copy that one. And I'll put that in the second images between the inverted commas there. And the first one that we want to show up first, I guess I'll use the same one as I did before, which was that one. Again, I'm going to copy the URL or select it normally as you would. Entirely up to you. Now I'm going to put that in the first image JPEG right there. As you can see, that's turned up there. Now I'm going to add the JavaScript to make it switch between these two. And to do that, I've got to open some script tags, which is left pointy bracket, word script, and right pointy bracket, and it'll put in a closing script tag for you. In between, I can put my JavaScript to make this happen. I've got some over here. I actually asked ChatGBT to write this for me quickly this morning, and it's done it for us there. Fantastic. Well, just to make sure that's going to happen, let's save this. We'll save the page changes. We'll exit the Visual Builder. Roll on down. When I click on that image, it should switch to the other one. There we go. Fantastic. Click again. It should go back. Great. Well, that's working fine. Let's do a few other things. Let's add some CSS. Okay. Well, let's go on down this time. I'm going to add a new module. I'll just use a little call to action there. I'm not going to change anything. I will put a link in so the button shows up. And let's give it a class name of EXCSS1, example CSS1 if you like. So this has now got a name that we can target with some code. And although you can write CSS and things like that in your additional CSS panel, you can also put it in a code module and put it on the page here. 
So we've got a class name going on there. We'll save that. Let's go back into our little code module here. We can leave everything as it is, so we're still doing our image swap. But what I'll do is I'll start from the top. I'll scoot it all down a couple. Now I'm going to op open and close some style tags so we can add CSS. Exactly the same as the script, left pointy, but I'm going to say style and right pointy. Okay, well we want to target this and I gave it the name, the class name of EXCSS. All class names have a dot or a period in front of them, then the class name. We'll make sure you get it right, it's not going to work. EXCSS1 I believe it was. Then we can open and close some curly brackets and you can add whatever code you want. So let's change the background color. Perhaps we'll have to use the important because it's already got a color. So I'm going to say background blue and nothing will happen because I've got to force it because it's got a background already with exclamation mark important. There we go. Fantastic. You can give it a bit of box shadow or whatever you want. Use any CSS that you care. So let's say box shadow and let's give it four picks by eight picks by 12 picks and let's give it a dark gray. As you can see, we've got a little box shadow going on under there now. If you want to add another piece of code, always put a semicolon in there. Border. Yeah, let's make it two pixels solid. And we'll make it white in color again. It's actually appeared by default as white. Well, let's say purple just for fun. There it is. It's got a two pixel purple border. So there you go. You can add style. You can target classes. You can add more classes to different modules, etc. You can also add animations if you want to. For instance, um, a couple of days ago, we did a video with a little bounce animation. So let's drop down one more. Yeah, I've got an animation here. It's the one we did the other day. Now nothing's happening because I haven't actually given it the animation. I need to put a semicolon on that top one there. Well, it's not going to read it. So let's put our keyframes in. I'm going to drop down just below here for the animation keyframes. Put them in there. As you can see, that's bouncing up and down about once every five or six seconds. So there's plenty of ways you can use a code module. They're really useful. You can do CSS, you can do JavaScript, you can do HTML, all kind of things, really useful. Let's just make sure everything's going to work on the front end. I'm going to save this. We'll save the page changes again. And let's exit the Visual Builder. We'll roll on now. Make sure our image swap's still going to work. There it is right there. And as you can see, our animation is working. We can click on the button if we want to. So there you go, guys. There's several ways of using your little code module. Really, really useful little feature. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.